I'm here to talk to you about uh, Swain. It's a, a program I created that is uh, no budget free uh, for Microsoft 365. It enables uh, low budget blue teams to be able to purge email and search email and uh, for incident response um, and just uh, be able to have a shot at the same stuff that the big guys have, right? So uh, my name is Andrew Heishman. I'm a security engineer. Uh, obviously, as you can see to the left, um, I have an adorable Bernie's Mountain Dog. Um, funny story about her. Uh, when we first got her, there was a little bit of debate about what we we're going to name her. And um, me being a responsible dog owner, uh, I wanted to name her Windows XP, right? Naturally, right? Um, she didn't go for that, really. So we compromised. Uh, and her name is Winnie. But her real name, her government name, is, is Windows XP. We just, you know, in front of other people, we, we call her Winnie. So my wife ever asks you what our dog's name is, it's, it's, it's Winnie. It's, it's Winnie. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've, uh, I have about four years of cybersecurity experience. Even though it's been a short time, it's been in a lot of different industries. So I've worked in healthcare, banking, and manufacturing. So I've seen a lot of good. I've seen a lot of bad. I've seen a lot of regulation. I've seen a lot of standardization that you know, good, bad, whatever, it's different. Um, so, and I started out in my first shop in, in healthcare. Uh, we started, and they had a great email response program. They had amazing purging techniques, and they didn't just block, they purged, they went through everything. Um, and then I moved on to my next job, and they didn't do that. And I was a little bit perplexed. I was like, well, why doesn't everyone do this? This is like, you know, the best. Like, you should, you should be purging emails from, you know, yanking it from people's boxes. Um, and I saw quickly some of the problems uh, that there are with uh, the industry and email incident response. You know, when you walk in as a security uh, practitioner to an environment, you're, you inherit the technology, right? You, you're dealt the hand that you have. So um, sometimes hardware requirements and infrastructure requirements get in the way of using the best product objectively. Another one is login portals, you know, endless login portals, you know, four or five uh, RDPing into multiple different boxes so you can purge, you know, it's, and lengthy SOPs that frankly uh, encourage negligence when you are swamped with alert fatigue, right? Another thing is, uh, do you have like lengthy tool restrictions that, that don't turn it into an active incident response thing? It turns it into a more of like a post-incident cleanup where it's like, okay, now let's go back and check all of our bases instead of actively triaging the emails and the phishing alerts that are coming in. And then lack of comprehensive searching syntax, uh, not being able to find exactly what you want and exactly what you need. Obviously, uh, attackers are, are developing uh, ways to fish us at incredible rates, you know, um, changing headers and, and manipulating parts of the email that just get right by our email sandboxes and everything like that. And you need to be able to customize your searches to be able to pull all of them um, without having to run 20 different queries, right? So how Swain does it better is it has a robust syntax. It has wildcarding. It has everything you could ever need. I've never not been able to find an email that I was looking for. Um, you know, when it, some of the standard tools are great, but when you get into something like maybe like a SendGrid campaign, right? So they pre-append different numbers and letters and nothing's ever the same, but you can wildcard with, with Swain. So um, it, it allows you to really capture everything, get a good amount of closure. It's got straightforward infrastructure requirements. We'll talk about that in the next slides, but just it's, it doesn't require a whole lot of, uh, of variables for it. Um, it's open source, uh, so it's mainly targeted at small to medium-sized businesses, um, not looking at the Fortune 500s who can just throw money at uh, Proofpoint or something like that. And it's fire, fast, reliable, and user-friendly. Uh, yesterday, I purged about 1,200 emails in four minutes. So um, it was, it's pretty, uh, pretty fast. Uh, so how it works, in order to explain how it works, I need to first explain all of you might not be familiar with eDiscovery in Microsoft 365 and their content search feature. In Microsoft Purview, which is actually the, it's just the Microsoft Compliance Center, it's just been rebranded to Microsoft Purview um, because they do that from time to time. But what it is, is content search is used to find evidence for eDiscovery cases and 
most people don't know that you can use content search outside of eDiscovery entirely. So uh, you don't have to open a case. You don't have to do any data retention. You can just content search away. Um, and content search has an amazing search capability. You can use it in, um, you can use it in Teams. You can use it in uh, Exchange Online, SharePoint, anything like that. I mainly use it for Exchange. So some of the syntax examples include to, from, received, subject, and most importantly, attachment names. I've found whole campaigns based on just attachment names alone. You know, when they alter the subject, they alter the, the from and the to, it's, you know, you just pull the attachment and you're looking at the whole shebang, right? So once you search for these and you make your query, you then have the option to purge them and you can do it in two different ways. And it's a soft delete or a hard delete. So a soft delete is going to move those emails to the user's inbox, uh, user's deleted folder inside of their, 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 micro, uh, their exchange box. And then data retention uh, will be applied to that, that folder. Uh, a hard delete will basically pull all those emails and put them in the system quarantine for Exchange Online, where data attention, retention will also be applied to that. So you know, if it's seven days, seven days after that, it's all going to be deleted permanently. You're not going to get it back. So, and then at the end, you can then use the blocking feature to add email addresses to the tenant block list. The main way this is so much simpler is because it's all in one place. You don't have to go into the security console and the purview console and, and look at all that. And what do you need, which is the most important part? You need E3 licenses. <clears throat> you, know, it's, you don't need E5. You don't need Defender, anything like that. Uh, you do need Exchange Online. So this will not work if your mailboxes are on-prem. And I could go on for hours about that. But uh, hybrid in some cases, because some people have shared folders that are on prem, right? Uh, and then they'll have their mailboxes in the cloud. So if you have your mailboxes in Exchange Online, this will work for you. Some of the roles you might need, a coverall would just be eDiscovery Manager in O365. That's going to give you the ability to search and purge. But because of the nature of the tool, there's also other, other roles you can give to where if you only want someone to search and then only one person to purge, you can do that. Security administrator is only for if you're going to be blocking email. So if you want to use that feature of the tool, you'd need that role. Uh, and you need a positive attitude, which, you know, optional. So let's, uh, let's see how it works. So this is the, the main just command line interface. Um, you have three options of the main tool. is start to search for emails, purge emails, and block an email address. Uh, at the bottom, it, if you hit the syntax, uh, it will pull the link for the O365 documentation that is linked in GitHub. And it, you can basically look through all of the search parameters and, and, and what you, know, you can search on. Uh, and there's 30, 35 search parameters. You can fully customize everything. And then first run, when you do that, basically it's going to help you be able to set up your, this uses PowerShell commandlets in the background. So you're going to need to uh, do the first run and then it'll tell you what you need to do in PowerShell. Very simple, I think it's about three lines to, to begin using this. And that's so that you can start, uh, the, so this program can authenticate to your O365 compliance center. So I had an option to have this program store credentials locally, and I decided not to do that and just rely on the Microsoft 365 infrastructure. They've upgraded their commandlets for Exchange Online. So it used to be V1 and then V2, which is legacy authentication. Now it's V3. So when you actually use this tool, it will prompt you for MFA if you're not on the domain you're entering. You see that little blurred outline? That's just my domain email address. When you put that in, it'll prompt you for MFA if you are not like VPN into your, the domain that you're authenticating to. So um, that's just something to note. I just thought that was a better way to do it. You can name, as we can see, we go down the line, uh, what is the name of the content search? Uh, send grid test. Put a note in there for compliance reasons. If you, know, you want to put a date in there maybe of when you started the search or what, what ticket it was attached to. You can specify which mailboxes you'd like to, to search. I have never just done one. I've always just done all. So and then it prints out a little bit. These are the most used that I've had from recipients, subject, and received. And those are the ones that I've used the most. So I included them right there. So you don't have to always go back to the syntax you know, guide, things like that. Um, and some example queries at the bottom, you know, it's very simple, you know, from test at SendGrid. I could also just do SendGrid.com, right? That's the beauty of wildcarding uh, and subject, all the bacon, you know. So you can wildcard pretty much anything in this, in this program. Uh, then after that, 
it'll state the job, it'll send the job to O365. You'll see a progress bar. The progress bar isn't actually linked to how the progress is going in Compliance Center. It's just to give you a frame of reference for like typically how it, they take from two to five minutes. So it's set for a range in there. Uh, then it will come back to the menu. And once you're done with that, you can then go and select your purge option. And you, you'll put in your, the name, again, of your, the domain email address. Um, you'll do the name of the content search you just created. And then whether you want to soft delete or hard delete. Right. So that is the bulk of the program. And it's, you know, purging tools for the little guy. It's, it's mainly geared at, at, you know, smaller companies that, you know, I'm, I'm, my heart goes out to those one man shops, right. That, that just don't have a lot of resources and don't really know what's out there because they can't get unburied to figure out what's out there. So uh, this is a really kind of like a, a quick win for a lot of those shops to just be able to um, up their incident response game a little bit and not just get, totally owned. So um, that is it, unless anybody has any questions about it. Yeah. Say again? Uh, GitHub, yeah. So it is a GitHub repo, it's public. Uh, where would be the best place to put that? Like maybe, do you guys? Put it in the tool chat on Discord. Okay, yeah. Uh, we're also gonna do a roundup of all this yeah. next month, not announced yet, but yeah. it's gonna happen. Okay, yeah, so um, I can throw the, the GitHub link into the, this is good, like you said. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Any others? Uh, yeah. How would you respond to a manager who's concerned about a SOC analyst being able to read the CEO's email? See, that's a good question. Um, so, say again? Oh, sorry. Uh, he asked, how would I respond to uh, someone who, like a manager or someone like that, um, being concerned about uh, like a SOC analyst or uh, entry level security analyst being able to read the CEO's emails. Um, that's a, that's a really good question. So how I've dealt with in the past, because you can uh, customize the queries and everything like that, I think it's a, everything's auditable. So I think it's a general understanding because of these small shops, you know, you're not using this in a, in a mega corporation or anything like that. I think there'd be a general understanding. Uh, there's no technical controls. To, to limit that, you know, the roles are very straightforward in O365. You either have this role or you don't. And like I said, there are the ability to segment the searching and the purging. So if you maybe have some newer talent, you could have them search, but you couldn't have them delete or vice versa. Um, but that, that is a concern. But um, like, uh, I, I, I couldn't see that being a, a huge problem in some of the smaller shops, but it's something to definitely keep in mind. Uh, you had a question about it? Yeah, about licensing. So, is that Right. Can, sorry, can you repeat that? So, for the licensing? Yeah. No, so you need, uh, sorry, I'll repeat for the, he basically was asking about the licenses about, you know, there's obviously a lot of, in Microsoft, there's a lot of different options, you know, there's E1, there's E3, you know, things like that. But so E3 is required to, to, to run the tool in your environment. E3 is required. Um, there was a, it's actually funny that you say that there was a point in time before when I was using the legacy authentication, I didn't try this, but I felt like I could almost connect to anyone's domain and just start searching your emails. I didn't try it, but then I upgraded the authentication, um, you know, mechanism that I used in the background. And then you could only authenticate to the, to, to your domain with MFA. Um, so I would say that you need, uh, you need E3 to run the tool. Um, and, and that's just about it. Any other questions? Thanks. Nice.